Hey everybody, welcome to Tokyo on a beautiful sunny autumn day in September. Technically, it's still summer. And that is a Tokyo sky tree in the distance with the Chuo Bridge. Usually I'm over on that side, but today I'm on this side. Hey, and uh, today we've got a very interesting topic to discuss because it is one that is uh, gonna be on a lot of people's minds over the next month. And it was just in the news yesterday as the mayor of Shibuya had a press conference telling people, please don't come here for Halloween, please stop. And I can understand the sentiment because for the last uh, several years, I've been telling, I, I've seen this as a really bad idea. I know a lot of you don't, but I see this as a really bad idea. And you have to think about it. And and now in the light of, and it, it, it's sort of, it's an interesting uh, concept, but you have to think of it in the light of what happened last year in Seoul, Korea. We had uh, 159 people, I believe is the number, uh, fatalities as a result of not really good uh, uh, traffic control of people. And they got crushed. And I can see that when you have this many people in one area, in particular the streets of a city, which should not be shut down like this to do something that is quite often alcohol infused, where there are a bunch of bars around, it's just a recipe for disaster. And I was always wondering how they could let this let this go on and you know I, I think you know we hit the end they were pretty much openly promoting this back in 2015 2016 2017 2018 when Japan was starting to boom then the pandemic hit and of course they didn't want people to come because of that but 2019's Halloween party was a little bit not great I think there were lots of issues uh, they did ban public drinking let me show you really quickly before I get too deep into this this comes from our friends at uh, tokyotipo.com, which has an incredible guide for events. They probably update theirs more than any of the other uh, Japan uh, travel sites. But there are rules and regulations to the Shibuya's um, Halloween. I'm putting in quotes because I don't even know what's gonna happen this year. Once again, Shibuya has, will ban public drinking from October 28th to Halloween around the station. Meaning, if you have an open container and you're drinking alcohol outside, the police are going to do something. Maybe they're gonna tell you to put it away and then you don't, and then they'll ask you again, you don't, and then they probably will arrest you or fine you. I don't know what they're gonna do exactly. You can be held in Japan for, I believe it's 21 days with, without any cause. So I want you to consider that before you think about how polite Japan is. It's not that polite when you enter the legal system. Bad people enter the legal system all the time. Gone, and he probably didn't, the ex-president of the Nissan. And he, I, we, it's debatable whether he did anything or not, but he was held for a very long time without ample proof, perhaps. Again, debatable, but the point is you don't want to test Japan's legal system. Follow the rules. You know what they are now, no excuses. 28th, the times of the bans are from 6 p.m. to midnight on 29th, October 31st uh, to October 31st, midnight to 5 a.m. I'm gonna say that I think they're banning it this year. This, this, I'm not sure if this is fully updated, but I, I got a feeling they're just gonna ban it completely. I, I. I, I don't know. I don't see anything good with the Halloween events other than the fact that they do it, but they don't need to do it on the street. For years, we've been having in Tokyo, and I'll take some of your questions. I see, I see some really good ones coming in here. For years, we've had um, uh, Halloween events in Japan, and it do this. They should hold it in a square or open area. Go to Odaiba. Take big site and make that an event hall where people have to get uh, uh, metal detectors and checked out before they enter. There's just too many things that can go possibly wrong with people outside in a city street in masks and costumes, you know, play guns and things like this. I, it, I just see this being a huge, huge issue, if not now, in the very near future because you have a lot of people that don't understand Japanese culture, that don't respect, um, probably too immature to handle alcohol. The thing is, you know, in Japan, we have these checks and balances where if you, uh, let's walk a little bit down the bridge here. Checks and balances where 
you know, your reputation is quite important. And if you're sitting outside drinking a beer and getting drunk in public, you're pretty much shamed, especially in the countryside. Everybody in your neighborhood or in your area knows you. That's why you don't see a lot of people out there. Now, salarymen, workers, and, and this, yeah, they are getting drunk out and they, they pass out in public. And that's a real black eye on Japan and the culture here. It's not something that, um, you know, you, you sleep on a park bench or you fall asleep in a train. Public drunkenness is, I would say it's on the decline here thanks to the pandemic. But it's a, it's a part of the culture I think that will die out because it's something that was very much Showa era where the bosses, they had to do that with their bosses. If the boss wanted, didn't want to go home because he didn't like his wife, he would have, he'd make the staff go out with him to get drunk in the bar. And you can't say no to the boss and uh, you wouldn't get a promotion or a raise, whatever, political stuff. It, it, it's led to a lot of alcoholism and, and many problems in the home. And in Japan, it's not a perfect situation. You know, the, I can't imagine Kanai waiting up for me every night because my boss is making me go drinking with him and I half want to go. I don't know. It, it, it would be awful. I, I personally haven't been out drinking in a very long time, so I'm not even sure. But I mean, now the situation is, the, the Tokyo police are out. They're doing the best for the, the um, patrolling and uh, the streets here, making sure that everybody is safe. They have these DJ police officers that are up uh, above ground making announcements in Japanese, which Westerners have no idea for the most part what it even means. Um, so I, I don't know the success of that, but you can see the traffic patterns have really, um, I don't know, it's just, is it, is it fun? Not crossing Shibuya Scramble, maybe the, it's an experience in itself to be moved efficiently by police officers using tape, yellow tape here to get you. You can see it more clearly. They're very much in control. The thing is, you know, every year fights break out, problems happen, and I, I understand why the mayor doesn't like it because the residents of Shibuya don't like it. It's, it's just not, it's not fun for locals. And, uh, it, at the next day, often, in, in particular at night, there's just so much trash. But a lot of uh, public, pe a lot of people, citizens, residents, and even uh, foreign expats that live here will go in the morning and clean up. And you can hardly see that an event has taken place the night before, which is amazing. That's J Japanese culture. But the fact that there was a disaster left behind every year, um, and most of the trash does not come from the locals it comes from visitors that are visiting that can't find trash cans which is another issue um, so I'm I'm kind of happy that uh, the mayor yesterday of Shibuya Kud remember Tokyo is a is a prefecture a state it's not a it's a metropolitan area but within Tokyo there's 23 wards Shibuya Ku is one of and Ku means ward Shibuya is one of the 23 wards or boroughs I guess you could say in New York we have five boroughs uh, in in uh, Tokyo with 23 wards. Shibuya Ward is one of the five, uh, 23 wards, and the mayor of Shibuya Ward said, if you're coming for Halloween to Shibuya, don't come. And he like, just said it. So the economic impact for Shibuya, I don't know what it's gonna be, but I think the downside might be better or greater than the economic impact, because people are gonna go to Shibuya anyways. Now, the question is, should you go? Now you know why it's banned. We had, uh, we've seen the dangers of it in Korea. We've seen the, uh, uh, the fights, alcohol, the bad instigators. There are some uh, uh, Twitch live streamers, uh, what do you call it, uh, in real life, IRL streamers here that are just, you know, dopes and they're looking for anything to, to get their community riled up so that they can make money off of it. And I think that this is, uh, you know, I can understand that as somebody who does live streaming, but I don't do something to get money back that's bad. I will just say no, because we have a responsibility here, at least because I live here. But I've seen over the last year, in particular, there was one YouTuber who got on a train and started to yell at people about, you know, Japanese that were sitting on the train about, you know, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and all this really bad stuff. He's not welcome here. And if you see uh, in real life li live streamers 
you better confront them and tell them and, and tell the police as well because I think that when they're doing bad things, they need to be reported because you can't let that stand it because it brings in more people and more bad, bad uh, actors that aren't helping. They're actually hurting. And for me, as somebody who lives here, I see that and it's embarrassing. And this is a direct result of that as well. Japan is very reactive to what happens. So you have some bad instigators, Western tourists that do some bad stuff. Um, you know, Logan Paul has since apologized and we're moved past that. But there's always somebody new who comes and Japan reacts to that. And the reaction is usually quite harsh. And who does it impact? Me and us who live here. So I do my very best to tell you guys the best that I can to where to avoid and where not to go to. And I know it sounds like a party pooper, but I'm telling you, you can still wear a costume. Just do it at a club. There's places that have, you know, all you can drink, entrance fees. It's a controlled environment. There's music. It's fun. You can go in there. But if you're going out to the city streets um, this year, I don't think it's, it's, it's people are going to still do it. And there's going to be some trouble. And I think that next year it's just going to be worse. And it's going to be harder and harder. And maybe if this year people listen, they, they bring it back. I don't know. So kick banned him too. I, I you know, I'm good. You, you can't make a living that way. That's not making a living. <laughs> I don't know. Don't mention, yeah, you don't need to. I went to the America Muda for Halloween in 2018. It was great. Way less people than Shibuya. I think it's become too famous. Um, this year, Tokyo is also going to be doing a countdown party. I've, I've gotten some information. Um, they're going to start to do the Western countdown events. But even going to an intersection in the city, imagine, you know, we have uh, New Times Square, right? Now, Nobody in the city has said that we're going to do countdown parties. It's like still an unofficial thing. The police are there. It's kind of chaotic. It doesn't seem like Shibuya Hachiko at New Year's is an official thing. But people still go there, so the police make sure it's safe. But the government hasn't really, and this is typical of Japan, and we have somebody who lives in Shibuya. I'd be interested to hear your opinion on this, honest opinion. Um, in Japan, sometimes the information is not clear. And sometimes it's better that way because then it leaves some gray area. But when it's gray, and in particular, this was a problem during the pandemic, a lot of misunderstanding can come when the leaders are not committal into something for political reasons. And this is a problem. But the mayor yesterday came out full force and said, don't come. So that's easy to understand, I think, right? The question is, will people listen? Why, why don't you and other expats set up a safe and fun Halloween event? Uh, number one, I don't particularly like Halloween. I don't, I mean, I like it for kids. I don't care. So, yeah, it's interesting, but I, I, every day is an adventure for me, so I'm not really into it. But I would like to see um, other, you know, YouTube influencers. I think there's a, a big market for it. I think the city should close down Yoyogi Park and then do something there perhaps and have police officers there. But it needs to be off of the city streets in a large area and that's really going to, uh, that's a nice view, that's really going to make it safer and easier to control and fence it in so people can't come in from the outside and then you can check bags and keep it safe because we still have threats from, you know, dangerous idiots out there who want to do harm and I, that's another reason why I don't want to go to Shibuya at, at this time because it's just too much risk for harm to, to happen I just see some potential problems and we had a prime minister who was assassinated a couple of years ago um, over a year ago now and we've had some you know close calls with the other prime minister there's a lot of a little bit of political uh, issues domestically there's stuff that's uh, the world is not safe fish there's issues going on, and tensions are high. And here comes Space Boat. I can see it across the street. Can you? Underneath the bridge there. 
So I call on the mayor. Okay, I understand to ban it, but I think it's I think it's bad to, to uh, also not have a second option for people because they're going to come anyways. It's just too big. He's doing it early. So I think that other options could be to have it on the riverside, but then you'd have people, you know, drunk or falling in. Well, that guy probably should have his shirt back. I'm going to say that here. Give him some privacy. Perhaps he needs it. Um, outside sunbathing. <laughs> uh, I used to have one of those too. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I see too much risk, but I, I do think you need to give people an op alternative. And uh, the comments that you give here might, might just do that. The smaller towns, other places. It does not have to be in Tokyo. I think that it's crazy that it's in Shibuya. It's got the. It doesn't need it. That's the. And that's the bottom line. Right? Isn't isn't it? Shibuya does not need it. Shibuya does not need to have the Halloween. Shibuya, everybody's going to go there anyways. Why would you add this dimension to it? It's not necessary. Hold it somewhere else. Throw the economic impact. Another town should be that Halloween town. I call on the local regions of Japan. All you small towns in there that say, nobody ever comes. Your towns are so retro. A lot of the streets, they look spooky at night. I could see a town where they bus in people for an all-night event with DJs and stuff. The problem is I can't see most of the residents over the age of 65 agreeing to this. But if they did, those retro towns would be the best places to hold it because the background of it would be incredible. The economic impact for a small town, you would make all the money that in one, di one night you would make all the money that you would make in probably two years off of the economics of your small town. It would bring back younger people into the fold. Uh, you, you could have it once. In fact, I could see it being something like Thailand's full moon party where this was just a word of mouth thing and everybody on the 31st of any month that falls on the 31st, which is January, March, May, isn't that how it skips a month? It's supposed to do the knuckle system. Hold it then. Think about it. I mean, there's a lot of issues with when, when something gets banned that's popular, there's a vacuum and another area can take advantage of it. And uh, maybe that's uh, what they can do. Shibuya is like the glutton meme of the fat suit man guzzling water from the pipe. <laughs> do Japanese hand out candy in Halloween? No, they do not. There's no trick or treating. Um, unless it's set up beforehand. Kev is avoiding a, a, a Shibuya. It's interesting comments. If you want a conservative town to hold an event for young progressive people, yeah, I can't see that working either. You never know. The, the, it's not a political thing. It's just an issue of do you have ideas to help your town? And some towns, the there's a reason why I'm looking here. That's just awesome. This bridge just gave birth to the space boat. Whoa. So the question is really like, if you want to revitalize your town, you're going to have to have ideas and find opportunities and vacuums. And there's so many, there's thousands of towns. There's not just one or two. And there's always going to be a progressive mayor or and I don't mean that in a political way, I mean progressive in the way it sounds, as in somebody who wants to lean forward into economic growth with ideas for, that'll attract young people. And the towns need it, man. In fact, you could do trick-or-treating in that town. That'd be pretty cool. And Japanese would go there too. You can go to the U.S. Naval Base at Yokosuka for trick-or-treating. That's something that I probably could Hey, is anybody, if anybody's watching from Yokosuka, send me a message because I wonder if I could take Leo there because I we both have U.S. passports, you know. I love to, there's a lot of American expats that are going, man, I wish you had trick-or-treating. But the fact is that when I go back to visit my parents, the culture of trick-or-treating in, in the U.S. is not the same as it was when I was a kid in the 80s, you know. 
like with uh, Elliot and ET going trick. It, it doesn't really exist like that anywhere because there's too many sickos out there and people are worried all the time. So Japanese do not trick or treat. Japanese kids, they only dress up for, for Halloween for school, especially like an English language school. The, there's no Halloween culture here except in marketing to candy and certain confections. There's no holiday in October, so they use Halloween as that big marketing push. Same with Valentine's Day, they've taken um, international marketing things, This in particular during the bubble era in the 1980s, Japan had, had accepted a lot of Western uh, um, holidays and incorporated them mostly for marketing because it was a brand that they knew abroad that they could use to shore up sales, and it works. Christmas is another one. It's not a, Christmas here is, it stinks, but you have illuminations, but there's no spirit behind it. But you'll see the marketing everywhere for it, right? Uh, but, I mean, this is a whole nother episode, but the whole culture of cosplay, that's something that's in Japan. But I have to tell you, that's not normal in Japan. Cosplay is not normal, all right? If you want to, 90, 99% of the people, 99.9% .9 of the Japanese are not cosplaying, okay? You know what, the, what it looks like? Japan is one of the most conservatively dressed countries in the world. Black, black and dark suits boring tie, white shirt. It's like 99% of the morning traffic on the trains in Tokyo. Maybe less jacket in the summer, they dress down. It's a conservative place, so people dye their hair, you know, maybe brown to stick out, but there's no blue hair people, unless you're under 20 or something, all right? I see a lot of foreigners come in here in cosplay. That's cool, actually, I love it. I like it when people when people come with that look different. I, I love the fact that we it feels more diverse walking around the streets of Tokyo with more international tourists. But it's weird, man. Japan is not walk around during the daytime, you know, cosplay place. Keep your cosplay to like, I don't know, love hotel or something with your significant other. <laughs> I don't know. Cosplay is not a thing that you 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 do out onto the streets. That's why the event is so interesting to see. I think so. And Dara, you write it. I mean, I'm not. A, I'm not against what you what you're writing here. I'm against it not because it's 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 interesting. Of course, it's interesting. But I'm against holding these parties in Shibuya because it's dangerous. It's not necessary. I see the potential risks. I've been in Japan too long. This is my home. I see a mess afterwards. I see a lot of people who don't respect the rules. I see the reaction to Japan. If something, if somebody were to get killed, holy smokes, the everything would change day and night, and then a lot of the rights that we enjoy would be gone, just because of some idiots that wanted to make, have some fun, and somebody got killed. And it could be somebody was Japanese that was young. It doesn't have to be. It, it, don't, don't get me wrong. A lot of the issues that happen are not just international tourists. There is a lot of Japanese that are not doing the right thing either. All right. So please never get that. Never, never um, think that I'm picking on Western tourists. That's not the case. I think that most of the misunderstanding about culture probably comes from that. But trust me, there's a lot of bad actors in Japan who also get arrested or under the scrutiny of the police uh, all the time. And you know where they happen to live? in the city of Shibuya, Shinjuku, uh, Harajuku, and these areas probably where the most of the crime happens. That's also where there's a lot of police officers. So, boom. <clears throat> no one is an angel. That's right, including me. Somebody said that I was so kind and, and, and nice that I must be some kind of serial killer. And look, I understand that thinking, but these hands, they can hold love, all right? And Leo and my wife, and maybe give you a hug, but a weapon? My weapon is a gimbal, man. So, unless you think that could do damage, I'm okay. I'm not a serial killer. Or pedophile, somebody said that too. I reject that. Awful. 
You shouldn't throw ins in, uh, insinuations like that. You can get sued in Japan. I would never do that. Um, I'd rather celebrate a more Japanese festival on occasion than Halloween. Exactly. And I, you know, and that's the perplexing thing I think to a lot of people. And this is something that is going to be on TV quite a bit leading up to it. It's slander, right? Hey, don't slander me. There is uh, going to be a lot of debate on this uh, on the TV news here in Japan over the next few weeks, in particular maybe this morning. And it's a reaction to what the mayor has said, and I completely understand. Je Halloween is not a Japanese custom, all right? Japanese kids also like to dress up because they think it's cool because the other, they're not doing, they're doing it because a lot of people from international are doing it too, because it's a party. I bet you there's going to be a lot more, less Japanese at the festival because the mayor has said don't come. And it's going to be more Westerners than it's going to be Japanese this year. And that's kind of a problem. And I think that there's going to be some issues. And if there are, especially with these IRL people, if there are issues, then um, not only is live streaming going to be banned, which would break my heart because they're doing a disservice. Already there are places that won't let you live stream in places that I used to be able to. And I have to respect that as much as possible. Um, but bad actors change the culture for all of us. And that in particular means other tourists and expats who lived here held almost half their life or half their life. I don't want that to change for you or for me. So don't go. Think of something better to do. But Halloween, really? You're going to Japan for Halloween, a country that doesn't even celebrate it? Right? Really? I don't know. You know, the clubs used to be really good for that. What was the big one in, uh, near Chiba? The um, uh, Medusa or something? I can't remember. There's a couple of really good clubs. I, don't, I haven't been to a club in like 20 years. But that's where Halloween used to be for adults. They used to have events at hotel ballrooms. You know, you could rent them out. But there were events where people paid to get in and you'd have all you can drink and they were all indoors and stuff for a reason. Or the big outdoor place was Rapungi because that's where they held the indoor events. And then everybody after the events would be out on the street a little bit, but then got shuffled home. And then that somehow in 2015 or started to change to Shibuya. Before that, the history of Halloween in Japan is quite interesting. It was only expats. And uh, hey, Jared. Long time no see. We just got a bunch of stuff from Michael Sasano, some uh, macadamia nuts, and I'm always uh, reminded of Jared, <laughs> who gave our supplier. You missed the Katakai fireworks, uh, but it looked like we, we had a ton of fun, Jared. Um, I'll see, I'm gonna give a, some feedback on this probably next week after I get a chance to talk with uh, the team and see if, if maybe we wanna do another bus tour. But uh, thanks for that, Jared, I appreciate it. I'll share some of the videos and, the, and some more photos. Um, uh, but the point is, uh, you know, before Shibuya had this big Halloween thing, I've said this before in the past, I've been here long enough and I know how it works. I even tried to get on one of those trains uh, the first year I moved to Tokyo and you, you couldn't find it. Somebody had, would put a free ad, this is going back to the 1990s, okay, like tw 25, 30 years ago, before my time too. Somebody would put an ad in, a, in a, I, th I think it was like a, a free paper for foreign residents or maybe it was, I, I, I don't know, some, some periodical that everybody was reading at the time. And it would have cryptic message about what time, which car of the Yamanote line, people, Westerners, foreigners would dress up in Halloween costumes and attack a Yamanote train line and go around it once before the authorities got wind of this and then they would get off and then go to a bar together. So there are very few YouTube videos surviving because this is before even YouTube of these Yamanote Halloween parties that were so bad, so disruptive to the poor Japanese citizens who should not have to go through this. Um, typically, I think it used to be Shinagawa and people will get on at Shinagawa because there's a lot of expats in, in that area, a lot of, uh, there's another boat going by, a lot of expats in that area and it was just an easy uh, hub for people to get to. They'd get on at like 11 p.m., board a train, all the Japanese would see this and get out. Some of them would just, would just stay. 
and they were subjected to foreigners sometimes removing their clothes, uh, laying down on the luggage racks above, uh, trying to do um, gymnastics on the bars that you hold on to for safety, um, spilling beer and alcohol in the cars, leaving a massive mess, destroying and vandalizing the inside of it, ripping down ads. I've seen it all. You can see the YouTube videos. There's, and I would say within that, I bet you it was only like three or four people too. But there's enough of them where it's an uncontrolled situation where damage happens. And now move ahead. This is like the early 90s. And the police clamped down on this. As they figured this out over the years, very strongly, there was a police presence on, on uh, a few days before and a few days after Halloween where if they were to have this again, the police would just jump on you. And I think that that's one of the reasons why the Yamanote uh, Halloween bootleg parties ended. Uh, again, there's some very, there's very few surviving videos of this on YouTube, but older YouTubers like uh, TKYO Sam knows exactly what I'm talking about. And he's probably slightly against what I'm saying with Don't Hold It, which I completely understand. But he's been around you doing YouTube long enough where he remembers this. Kevin Cooney probably does as well. This is going before all of the, the current crop of YouTubers. Eric Sir Six probably does, but I'm sure he's mature enough not to have participated, right, Eric? <laughs> but there's a bunch of people who uh, know all about this, uh, the history of it. And um, yeah, it, there's very few that still remain on YouTube. Uh, um, and you should check it out because it gives you an idea of where it started. Now, fast forward to 2015. Now you have a, a semi larger event that's somewhat sanctioned by the city government. And you've seen that it's uncontrollable. Even with all those police. I don't see, I don't think that another soul could not happen. That's a lot of double negatives, but I could see this happening in Tokyo too. And I think the mayor saw it too. And it, as, as forward thinking as Shibuya Ward is, it's not worth it, man. So there you go. Hey, YS Ta Tong, Eric Sir Six is very mature. But he's just a child at heart. He's very much, we have very much uh, in common like that. But who is more childish? Perhaps, you know, we could fight over that. Wrestle, perhaps. I think he would win. He's got, he's freakishly strong. I used to, wait, hold on. Right there. I used to read the Tokyo Notice Board publications. Lots of information. Yeah, they, they would put stuff cryptically in there. I don't know. I think if you if you're in the um, the group, this is also before email and internet and stuff like this too. Early '90s, you have email and stuff, but not really internet cafes. So they put cryptic messages in newspapers and stuff, and where to meet. That's how people knew. Yeah. So there you go. Um, I would heed the warnings. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. We can see the images here. Hold on, stay there. You can see the images of what Halloween is like. It's not, it's not a lot of fun, guys. It's too crowded. Every, there's a lot of drunk people. Half the people are just wanting to get home, you know, because it's still a place where people work. I, I, for me, I'm in, somewhat embarrassed when I see it. You know, the police are doing their best to keep you safe. They shouldn't have to do that. It's not their job really it's not a real event and I hope it ends all right I'm a party pooper because the best parties are the ones that are out of control and if you live and if it's your house you don't want that to happen all right you don't want the party to happen the people who are saying I'm a party pooper probably are the people who don't live here knock on metal right so there you go all right, we're going to end this live stream by me walking down and showing you some culture. Because I, I have uh, something I want to show you. It's completely irrelevant to Halloween. There are going to be other places that uh, have Halloween events. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to have your favorite live streamers down there uh, live streaming all of the events. Because they always get like 20,000 people watching live. Because you know why they're watching? because it's madness and it's pretty interesting it's curious but it's madness 
and one of those live streamers is going to get in big trouble uh, one of these days, and uh, I think it might be this year. I don't know. The reason to watch. I'll tell you what, I won't be watching because Halloween for me is... I'll probably be editing videos and not working. I don't know. Something. Go to sleep. Eight Sourid writes in here. Hi, John. Japan is still on my bucket list. Uh, a places to go. Rakugo. Oh, yeah, the comedy. Many others that I want to see and do and so forth. You definitely should. Why doesn't Japan tourism hire you? That's a good question. They sort of do. Sometimes I get um, projects from JNTO and uh, Tokyo Convention Visitors Bureau and, and other groups to do stuff, to do some work, and that's really nice. I'd love to do more. We will see. This is the old Skuda neighborhood. And this is my backyard. This is my home. Chew a word. It's my home. Uh, under the bridge, there's lots of parking spaces. If you're looking for a place to park in, in Tokyo, pretty affordable and usually open. And then over here in this alley, we have um, it's one of the old remaining neighborhoods of, of uh, Tokyo, which is getting knocked down more and more, but some of them still exist right there. Do you see it? These pumps uh, right there, you see in the right center of the screen, these pumps are still around and they're getting removed and they're not going to be here much longer. But during the Edo period and before, um, this was the community meeting spot where everybody in the community, and there's several of them, would you ha you'd constantly have to go and get water because it didn't have plumbing. And these pumps uh, still work, I believe. Let's try. So they might be offline. I'm not sure. But it'd be interesting if it was. I think this one, this one still might work. Oh, this still works. One still works. That's pretty cool. More and more of these are um, don't drink it says here. No me must not. you can't drink it. So more and more of those pumps we're starting to see them leave as they're tearing down more and more buildings that look like this because they're not earthquake proof and that's kind of sad. The alleyways here. I think if you're in Tokyo, if you're staying in Shibuya, if you're staying in um, and that should be in Ginza, Shimbashi, uh, Tokyo Station. Come to this neighborhood. I'm telling you, put it on the map. It's called Skuda, T-S-U-K-U-D-A. And it's, it's a place where you're going to get a slice of the old Tokyo residential life before it's gone. And I, I have a feeling that these are all going to be knocked down soon to make way for buildings that look like this. And if they do that, that's a shame. The only tourists, well, that's not fair to say, but most of the tourists that come to this neighborhood are from France because the French guidebooks uh, have this as one of the attractions to go and visit. And that's uh, it's kind of crazy. So you see a lot of uh, French taking pictures and, and um, yeah, kind of admiring the old Tokyo scenery here. Because this is uh, by bicycle. It's five minutes to get to Ginza from here. It's crazy, right? One of the most expensive real estate areas in the world. And there exists a place with these low old buildings. But just recently, this they knocked down an old building and they put this in, these cement buildings. And then inside there, do you see this tree? That tree is uh, growing in between a bunch of row houses in the middle of it. It's extraordinary tree and it's a secret shrine that if you go to you'll be blown away. And you have ducks and fishing and it's just quiet and it's a wonderful neighborhood to walk around in. There's some um, nice restaurants and it's a, it's a really strong contrast to the center of Tokyo even though this is the center of Tokyo which is crazy. Yeah. All right, everybody, so here are the rules. If you go, you go. Go to our Discord server and send pictures there. Share with us your experience on Discord. I'll probably be monitoring that. I know Peso is here and some of the other uh, moderators will be watching. 
uh, as well and, and enjoying your photos. We've got, we have a, what is that, 17,000 people on our Discord server, a lot of them exchanging information live here in Japan. So if you're looking for friends, if you're looking for friends or people to meet up or you're a solo traveler, you can get like what was uh, um, the thorn trees of, uh, of a lonely planet back in the day. There's like these forums where you could get local up to the minute uh, uh, help from people that had just traveled to those places. That is all uh, part of our Discord server, yeah. Go to the Halloween party. I, I, maybe I'll make my own. And then uh, this month is this postcard. This is the Hibaku Desha. This is an episode I've just finished editing. It's, uh, I'm having Hiroshima uh, City take a look at it and they're checking it out. Any inaccuracies because this is something I can't make a mistake on. But this train was um, heavily damaged during the atomic bomb and back online. Um, and since, I mean, it was completely blackened and burnt out and people died on the train. And it's still running on the line in Hiroshima. There's a few trains and they're called Hibaku Desha, which means atomic bomb survivor cars, uh, trams. And this one is going past the Genbaku Dome or the atomic bomb dome. And this is this month's postcard. And on the back is a picture of uh, the lady. She's 92, she's the person that I interviewed. She's 92 years old, but was 14 years old at the time. And not only just survived the bomb from a, what was it, like a mile away. She also was three days later, the conductor of the train. They reopened this line three days after the bomb. It's an amazing story. And it, it'll be uh, coming on the Only Japan main channel in, uh, in, two, weeks or, uh, in two weeks from now. So. I just have to wait for um, it to be approved. I'm, I'm really excited about this. It was, it was a hard interview to, to uh, edit as well because she's talking about the flash, the heat. She hurt her back, um, the people that she saw outside. Y you know, she's walking around and it's like a mile or, mile or so away from the uh, hypo center. So, and then she goes back to work three days later and she's still alive to tell the story. It's an, it's an incredible, episode, I think it's going to be one that really leaves you having a, a, a different way to look at Hiroshima. Um, it really does impact you. Yeah, I got to go back over the bridge. All right. <laughs> Any questions? No. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you again tomorrow in a live stream if you have any questions. You can uh, DM me on Patreon or that's probably where if you need some travel advice or help, um, itineraries, I would highly recommend you join Patreon and send me a direct message there because I'm checking it all the time and I, I will be more apt to help. Somebody wrote me a message and said, could you please give us a two week itinerary uh, for our trip in October? And I'm like, I, I don't know. That's a lot of work. I don't, I don't know. I think you should be able to figure that out on your on your own, but I can't answer that. That'd be taking an hour to write that response. All right, so for the next uh, 30 seconds, enjoy the walk through this alley as I take in some sunlight and collect some vitamin D, stay healthy. <laughs>